Welcome back to Think Tech. Coronaville, what's next on a given Thursday? Jim Apicellis, Stephanie Dalton, Winston Welch, Cynthia Sinclair. Welcome to the show, you guys. Let's talk about let's talk about Coronaville today. There's a lot happening on Coronaville, and some of it, you know, would would make you happy, but uh, other other things would not. So, uh, Tim, uh, there there was an issue that was raised recently, and I wrote to you about it. What was that? Well, I think one of them was that. Um, well, there was tax breaks for uh, hate groups. Uh, we have a lot of different emails going back and forth. Okay, so I'm talking about Coronaville. <laughs> uh, the Let's state, talk. I'm going to prompt you, the state is not going to do contract tracing. How about that one? Yeah, that was quite remarkable. <laughs> so why well, it just goes to show you that when Fed funds go away, um, the, the earnest efforts to curtail COVID-19 in the state go away. So it's a, it's a tit for tat. If I have the Fed dollars, then we'll work on it. If we don't have Fed dollars, then it's not that important. Contact yeah. tracing is extremely important, especially where our numbers are at. I mean, our numbers are low enough where contract tracing actually will work. Yeah, if you, if you have, um, say, hundreds of people are coming down with the infection, contact tracing may be futile in this state. But if you have less than 100, which is what we've been having lately, then contract tracing is really important and it can, it can really flatten the curve. Um, so they, you know, I forget the name of the new uh, epidemiologist, her first name is Sarah. Um, she says, you're gonna cut them, cut them back now. I'm, I'm not sure that's for saving money or that she said there wasn't enough work for them. They were not, they were not fully engaged. I said, really, that's interesting. Who are they well, working you, you... for? If they're working for the state government and they're not fully engaged, it means the state government is not using them, is not instructing them and spending their time. Quite remarkable. At the same time, there have been articles about the mainland where there aren't enough contact tracers um, and they have hundreds of cases and they can't keep up with it and they need to bring in contract tracers, but they can't. And there's no national policy to equalize either on contact tracers or on healthcare in general. Yeah. So you have a place with too many and a place with too few, no equalization, no I, national policy. I think what happens is you get, the numbers get so high that contract tracing is almost impossible. Um, I just listened to Governor Newsom's uh, from California, his, his announcement about the lockdowns. And uh, an interesting tack that he's taking is he's looking at the percentage of ICU beds available. And if they hit 15%, then that particular region of California will go into a lockdown um, scenario. And uh, so I've never seen it look, um, looking at ICU beds as a, um, as a barometer. Yeah, well, speaking of which, um, Stephanie, you've been following the Supreme Court on COVID. It's really distinguished itself lately. If you were wondering whether they were, um, you know, uh, trying to help the country or not, I don't think you have to wonder anymore, at least not on COVID. Uh, you know, they ruled, uh, they ruled a couple of times uh, in favor of religion over COVID, said, you, you know, you can conduct a big religious experience and not, and, and you don't have to, um, they don't have to comply with state requirements on gathering. But, uh, you know, Kevin Newsom in California is probably a good example of where the Supreme Court's going. Um, they, they, they ruled recently, you know, the last day or so um, about um, his, his order to, what is it? Uh, I think it's to wear masks uh, or gathering. And um, there was a, there was a, a district court order uh, that enforced that and they turned that over. So the Supreme Court is ruling against um, agencies in the states uh, who would try to stop COVID. You've been following this? Well, a little bit, yeah, I have. I mean, I'm just so perplexed by it, but, um... On the, uh, on the obviously, you know, the conservatives are ruling in favor of religion and against any restrictions on liberty. So um, even in the face of um, Fauci's on right now saying the U.S. has now hit the record numbers for all, all things, the cases, the hospitalizations and the deaths, we're over the top now. And um, this doesn't seem to have any impact on the principles that are guiding that these people are, are 
ruling by. Because if it's to, to default to individuals, then making the right decisions to not go into the packed church, then, then we're lost. I mean, they're lost. So we're going to lose those people. And um, I know that it's California and other places that are running out of ICU room. So now they're converting the recovery rooms where into um, COVID areas too. But eventually we're gonna run out of doctors and nurses and the only reasonable suggestion recommendation that I've heard that evidently was mentioned earlier is to please bring in Chinese doctors. We need to bring in medical people from other parts of the world to come in and service and take care of all these patients. Because if it's okay to go get yourself infected, and we're obligated yeah, to... The, pro the problem with these Chinese doctors is they're all communist pinkos. Who um, cares? They and, need to work the bed. That's it. Who cares? You know, Tim is shaking his head on you. What did, what did you want to add to that, Tim? Well, you know, when the pandemic first came out, we were taking in uh, airplane shipments of, of PPEs from Russia. Yeah. You know, this goes to the, the point where how did, you know, the UK get this vaccine before the United States? We're falling behind in so many areas in the world, and we're almost becoming a second-rate nation versus a first-rate a first -rate world uh, oh, nation. Yeah. And, yes, and yeah. here we are talking about bringing in doctors from a foreign country, and here we are talking about the lack of PPEs and getting them from, of all places, Russia. Uh, just listen to the, you know, listen to that newsline story. I mean, it, oh, so the Matt title is unbelievable. Is you know, the, yeah, and what you don't hear is that doctors are retiring. They had enough already. You know, mm -hmm. six or seven months of this kind of high, high pressure. Mm -hmm. But the press is not reporting that because they don't want to, everybody racing for the door. Problem well, they is really should. They really should. have be. the resources. Mm -hmm. uh, and also they should the be. Facilities of the doctors. Right, but also the, the, the downside of getting COVID, because one of the things that's keeping people moving and just being oh so fatigued by this and tired of it, but the young people that get it have tremendous after effects. So there's still not enough information out there about who gets what and what happens to you as a result of this vicious bug. So it's not just dying and let all the people, old people die, so we can go to the bars and have our fun. The point is that once you get it, you've got complications and um, underlying conditions for the rest of your life, it looks like. Well, it Cynthia, let me go to you about a big thing that happened this week, and that was that the UK upstaged us. You know, this is the greatest country. My mother always told me that. This is the greatest country in the world. Um, and the UK, um, you know, for whatever reasons, whatever process, they're delivering either today or the next couple of days, and maybe next Monday, as I, they're delivering um, the uh, Pfizer, which is uh, at least half of an American company and half of a German company. And by the way, the, the two scientists that developed the vaccine that, that Pfizer is selling are Turkish German. They're from Turkey. I just love that story. They're immigrants. And there are people in Germany that oppose them because they're Turkish and they're immigrants. Ah, in any event, okay, we have this, we have this um, Pfizer, um, half American vaccine, but we're not distrib distributing that yet. How do you feel about that, Cynthia? I mean, is there a good reason? Fauci had a reason, maybe you can articulate it. Well, I don't think it's a big deal. Just because UK came out and you know put theirs forward and gave their approval before we did, it's this isn't a race for goodness sakes against other countries. This is a race against a virus that is attacking everyone in every country. So who cares if UK came up with it first? I don't care. I still don't really trust any of it because it happened so fast. But you know, I I believe Fauci when he says that no corners were cut. And you know it was all just fast tracked, but no corners were cut. Well, so the, the, the press has reported that they were not looking at the raw data; they were taking the word of uh, Pfizer and uh, what's it, Bio, BioNTech, um, without looking at the raw data. But the CDC looks at the raw data, and that means our process takes a little longer. So that's, right. that's some people have said that in defense of the CDC, and Trump has been chasing the CDC around about it. I'm not sure that's going to have any effect. But you know, it all sounds like more chaos to me 
Uh, so you know, Winston, what you know, what is going on with this? All these um, these uh, vaccines, and and you know, at the same time, the the back the back side of this is we have plenty of coverage about anti vaxxers and and the chaos sort of results in an increased number of people stepping forward and saying, "You first, I'm not going to do this right now." Um, and of course, then you hear from you know the experts, and they say, well, "No, you've got to have what is it, sixty percent." Of the, of the people in a given community or country or the world, you know, vaccinated be, before it will be effective as a, you know, herd immunity. Um, so where are we on this? How comfortable are you? Are you going to step forward? You're going to wait for Fauci to go on national TV or Joe Biden to go on national TV and take, take the vaccine? Well, we're down to 49 days in the Sahara, maybe 48 at this point. So I'm, you know, <laughs> The reality is that you're seeing a little bit of in the abs complete absence of anything from the White House. The, the, I mean, we had some positive news is that Scott Atlas, who was a what was he a chiropractor or a, a pediatrician designed as a Trump's coronavirus advisor. He, had, he was a DO, a doctor of osteopathy is what he And was. I love osteopaths, but he had no experience in infectious disease or managing this. So the fact that, that even the pretense is gone with that. We're not hearing. Wasn't Jared in charge of the coronavirus task force, and then wasn't uh, uh, Mike Pence the czar or something? And all what, that's just what all that pretense is gone. So you have Deborah Burks and the CDC basically just. Uh, I think they've been given free reign now, uh, and you had her come out and say, "Did you travel over Thanksgiving? You have coronavirus. You have to assume you do. Do not go to your grandma's or your auntie's house without a mask, and you need to be tested." So we, there was no, um, no filter on that. No one telling us that we have to inject our veins with bleach. You know, that was just from her. In the meantime, we had 31, over 3,100 people die yesterday of COVID. I mean, this is, I think about 3,100 people dying if they were, if this was a school or a plane or, um, you know, any, any number of these things, this is a real virus that's actually going on. As far as the safety and efficacy of the drugs goes, we'll see about the efficacy over time. But for safety, these pharmaceutical companies have a very strong vested interest in making sure that they are safe and effective because if they don't, no one's gonna be taking any other kind of vaccines coming down the pike, whether it's from polio or meningitis or all the other things that we've been protected from with vaccines. So personally, yes, I will get a vaccine. I will probably get two. I'll get I'll get a Pfizer and a Moderna. I don't know, or whatever the the the, the companies are. I'm not an anti vaxxer That may not be advisable, but I, I not good for you. Well, you know what? I got if you got to think about it. Like I got the two shingle shots. I got the first one, and then I got the Shingrix when it came out. So I would rather be over vaccinated than not. But let's just say for right now, every person gets one. And uh, each each one person gets two shots out of that. So, you know, and they're rolling this out slowly. The fact that the British got it first, good for them. You know, the, and and the fact that our, our system is, is, is a little slower or needs to, um, you know, check things. This whole process has been extremely fast tracked. We can't know for certain. There are going to be some side effects. It's it's inevitable. Okay, but is, but is that is that the main thing we need to focus on? No, that the, we need to focus on that this vaccine will hopefully uh, protect us from the virus. And we do need seventy percent, so we need that buy-in. So it needs to be right. And the and the pharmaceutical companies have a really strong interest in making sure that's true, regardless of what our government says. You know, Tim, we 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 did have a very interesting exchange of email on one one thing that Winston raised, and, and that is, um, you know, we don't really know how this is going to work when it's when it's out there in the in the community. And one possibility is uh, you if you have, if you are, you are you writing this down, Stephanie, if you have COVID, if you have COVID, and you take the vaccine, what happens? Does that make it worse or better or the same? Um, you know, remember that none of them are more than 95% you know, effective, could it be the missing 5% are the people who already have COVID? Uh, any, any discussion of that? What, what, is, what is happening on that issue? Well, I think they don't know for sure. Uh, if, now think of all the Americans that have recovered from COVID 
think of all the Americans that had COVID that didn't know they had COVID. And, you know, um, think about to what degree do they have antibodies in their system and then compare that to the vaccine. And so they think that there will be no, you know, no adverse effects, but they really don't know. And they didn't study that specifically. So that's a little disconcerting, just a bit. I, it's certainly not enough to raise any red flags to say this is a reason not to take the vaccine. But uh, you would think that um, they had thought of that and, and actually explored it. Maybe they have, and I just, I'm not aware of it. I haven't seen it in a news story. But um, yeah, it makes you kind of scratch your head going, well, what does happen, you know? Yeah. Okay, well, you know, one other thing for you, Tim, is uh, so we have Pfizer, uh, which I, I'm just dazzled with the fact that two Turkish immigrants designed that vaccine and it's going to change, probably change the world or save the world. Uh, Moderna out of, out of Massachusetts somewhere and AstraZeneca, which I think is a European company also. Yes. Um, Say again. I thought it was Swiss. Swiss sounds right. Um, so here we have the three, and um, you know, like like Winston, you'd be inclined to take take the uh, the vaccine, but which one? And suppose you post, you know, you watch TV because there's so little else to do these days. It's, it's think tech and watching movies on TV. We can talk about that. Uh, but in between the movies, they have all these ads. Right for every single drug you never heard of, you know, but by, by the carload. I mean, sometimes you have a five minute, you know, a five minute segment with nothing but drug ads that you never heard of. Well, you know, I, I guess you could predict that when these things all, you know, hit maturity, Pfizer, Moderna, and AstraZeneca, they'll all be in the ads. So you're going to see the ads with all the warnings, along with all the other medicines. Which ones are you going to take? And, and suppose some of them, well, suppose all of them are available. What do you do? What do you do in terms of choosing? Because they're not necessarily all the same in their effect. Well, that's a great fully loaded question, Jay. And I guess if you're a healthcare worker, the answer is it's what the hospital will buy for you to take for free. Um, you know, if you want to pay out of pocket for some other alternative vaccine, I'm sure that, that option's available. I would think that uh, Moderna might be a little bit easier to administer because it doesn't have to be kept at such cold temperatures than the Pfizer product. Uh, it's interesting to see how, how those, uh, these vaccines are kind of going to compete with one another in the open marketplace. Um, at some point, hospitals- and they won't be the same price, will they? They won't be the same price. Of course not. Of course not. <laughs> so um, it's a great question. And, uh, you know, I guess I'll pick the one that, Hopefully you'll go have uh, side effects on the label and you'll read the one with all the side effects and which ones are the, the minimal side effects versus <laughs> ones that are going to cause you, you know, a, you know, a, an arm grown out of your head or something. So I don't know. <laughs> you know, you know, at home, we don't, we like the, uh, the subscript, you know, we, we turn the titles on. So when you watch a movie, even if it's in English and you can see it, you can see the words. They got to do that for these these ads where they give you the warnings. <laughs> I, want, I want to see the titles. I want to see the language. Hey, you uh, know, so, I just want to say one thing about the uh, developers of the Pfizer vaccine. The um, the two doctors from Turkey, they're billionaires, and they still live in their same apartment in Istanbul, and mm -hmm. they have no reason or or any desire to uh, move it on up, so to speak. So yeah. I think that's pretty amazing that they you know they're yeah. dedicated to their mission and money really doesn't have all that uh, allure to them and they're still living in their original apartment. Yeah, they're really, they're global heroes. They should get an award or a Nobel prize or something. Uh, so uh, Stephanie, you know, uh, the uh, CDC with its, uh, what do you want to call it? Struggling credibility, it's still struggling as far as I'm concerned. They reduced the quarantine period. Um, and, and I still haven't figured out, maybe you guys know the answer, whether it's, uh, to seven days or 10 days or somewhere it's, between uh, seven yes, and 10. That's or maybe, right. Yeah. So can you talk about that? that? Why did they do that and how does it affect us? Well, I think, well, I mean, as far as I understand, the directions are you can go to a week if you've got a test that shows you're um, negative and otherwise you go to 10. So I guess it has to do with when it is that the symptoms show because that's the trend is that the symptoms, people can be exposed and not show any symptoms until the 10th day. Uh, although others show on the second day, but I think they've nailed down 
the curve for where it is that the extent, the extent of the time period for expressing these symptoms. So, um, but most people do it at four. If you don't, you usually, the 64% the of the population do it at the, at the fourth day. Anyway, so I think that that is brilliant. And I think it's late because I think that they knew a lot about this before. I've heard a lot about it over months and that that has been a huge stumbling block, especially for Hawaii. I mean, that 14 day quarantine is a hardship out here for anybody. I mean, you can't, I mean, people don't even go on vacation for 14 days. I mean, they come here and they face a quarantine. That and that'll I, have an effect in Hawaii, won't it? It's a huge effect. I think people are gonna wanna come now because they can maneuver around that. And uh, I know I was in a hotel in Waikiki a couple, a month or so, two months ago. I mean, they were really harassing everybody. Like, well, are you here in quarantine? Are you quarantined? It was constantly, all the service people were reminded. So that was a good thing that they were participating in making sure people were in the quarantine. But anyway, I believe it's a little late, but. Uh, it is going to benefit Hawaii because people could face uh, the week with a test. Well, and we got to make sure that David Ige hears about this. I hope you're going to write him a short note about it. Let him, let him know that he can yeah. reduce the quarantine. Well, so, I think Cynthia, I want to talk to you um, about Redfield and about others who have said uh, this is going to be a bleak winter, um, the worst winter imaginable. Uh, Fauci has said that also. So uh, what I don't understand is, uh, so you have the vaccine coming out and uh, okay, it's not here yet, but it, it should be here, what, um, in early December, maybe at least in small doses. <clears throat> um, and, and still they say it's gonna be a really tough winter. Uh, how do you reconcile those things? How, how do you feel about the winter? And by the way, let me add footnote, is that uh, uh, your friend Pom Pompeo, is having a Christmas party with 400 people. And of course, they're not, they're not uh, asked to wear masks. Um, he's a really special guy. Um, and people are gonna do that sort of thing. So how do you feel about this being a tough winter? Well, I think that Fauci's exactly right. I think Redfield is right on the money because we added a million cases, okay, in six days. Six days. In the beginning, it took us, you know, six weeks to add a million cases. I think it was even more than that, right? It's so the further we go, the, the more we add in shorter period of time. So it's just expanding exponentially so fast. I mean, 3,000, like, like Winston said, 3,000 people died yesterday alone in a hospital. That just, I mean, we're breaking records every single day. I hear we broke another record. We broke another record. And so it's not just what Fauci and Redfield are saying. The data bears out to that too. And people that aren't paying attention, I mean, you, you have to be shocked unless you're not paying attention at all. Yeah. And so in regard to the, the vaccines, there's actually two different kinds of vaccines. One has that MRSA or MRNA, excuse me, that um, memory uh, stuff. It's, it's supposed to teach the cells in your body to remember what that virus is so that you can go out and fight it in a stronger way. Whereas the other, some of the other vaccines are just straight old school vaccine um, technology. So there's only, I think it's just Moderna and Pfizer, um, BioNTech, that, that have this mRNA um, vaccine. So that'll be a choice, not so much who the manufacturer is or even the price or even the, the side effects, but actually the, the technology of the, of the vaccine itself. Yeah, we're gonna find, we're gonna find out more about that. And I, 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 would, I would predict that one of them will emerge as the one everybody wants, you know, but you may not have your choice about that. So okay. Winston, um, you know, let's talk about um, um, the Republicans in Congress. Let's talk about uh, getting relief from COVID. Let's talk about um, some kind of new CARES bill. Let's talk about what, you know, what's happened here since May when the Democrats uh, 
try to do something over $2 trillion and nothing has happened since. Um, what are the prospects uh, for the $900 million bill that the House recently passed? What are the prospects uh, in, the, in the Senate? Uh, are we gonna see anything before the end of this uh, administration? Didn't, uh, oh, who's the awful one? Mitch McConnell, the worst one. Didn't he say that that was job number one, was passing some coronavirus relief bill after the elections? So this is, you know, under a, a trillion dollars, 960 billion or something. 908. 908, we'll give or take 100 billion. Uh, after a while, it's just- moving. After a while. Exactly. Billion uh, year, billion and the stock market hit new record highs. So, uh, you know, we're obviously not worried about that on some level, the people that think about all this stuff. In the meantime, we're having Janet Yeltsin uh, appointed because she's going to be our new uh, lady in chief of the, the dough, which is, uh, you know, the, the world's moving on. And it's, it's, it's accounting for coronavirus. It's accounting for uh, vaccines coming out. Uh, It'll pass because the Republicans want to get something out, if nothing else, just to save Georgia or to try and save Georgia, although I don't know if that strategy is going to work. And they realize that their constituents are actually hurting. What did I think uh, Joe Biden said it was a down payment on um, relief that we needed to have or something akin to that. So obviously, when he takes over, the, the, the pipes are going to open up as much as possible. And I don't know how he's going to accomplish that, but it'll be in a, some bipartisan fashion. I, I, I actually the, um, you know, I mean, I think he's he's being very cautious in who he's picking. So I I um, I'm interested to see how this is going to roll out. But he he we're going to find out on January third after the Georgia elections how much how much leeway he gets in things because otherwise he's going to face a really obstructionist Congress. The other thing is that, you know, AstraZeneca, they had the accidental um, release of their vaccine that showed when they gave it in two equal doses, it was only effective 60% of the time, but when they gave a much uh, a smaller dose, a half dose for the first uh, injection, they reached 90% uh, efficacy. So they should, I don't believe it was accidental. I think that they really need to be experimenting with a lot of different types. Like, do we give twice as much for the second one or the first one or whatever? We're going to get 20 million doses in America from Moderna this year and 50 million by the end of the year this year. So that's going to cover a lot of healthcare workers, nursing home folks, but it's, they're spaced out by a month too. Now that's not going to account for, and that has been a, a lot of the healthcare deaths is, is, is older people, uh, especially in homes, but it's not all of them. It's just a lot of them. We're going to see a huge number, uh, literally a, a of probably hundreds of thousands dying before the end of January. So we have to buckle our seatbelts and know, uh, I think probably this next week is just gonna produce horrific numbers as Thanksgiving starts to spread. And before Christmas, it's just gonna be, it's gonna be awful. So uh, these vaccines, Johnson Johnson's coming out with a one-shot vaccine. Uh, they're, they're looking by February. So, so there's different things coming down the pike, but also you, you mentioned about which shot do you take we don't get a choice. When you go to the doctor to get your flu shot, I don't think he has it or she has a choice. I think they just give you the shot that they have in the pharmacy. The same for, for Shingrix, you know, there's one Shingrix shot. Um, and you mentioned about if people have COVID right now, should they get it? It looks like all of their antibodies disappear within six or eight months anyway. So I would say they probably should get it to train the body, like uh, Cynthia was saying with the mRNA, that that maybe yeah. this, um, you, you know, all of us of a certain age did have chicken pox, but we're still supposed to get the Shingrix because of that. So even though we have the virus in our bodies, we need the, the, well, the uh, protection. One of the reasons effect. that it, it takes, uh, you know, 10 years customarily. Build a well, yeah, that's it. right. And you need have to, to be re-vaccinated. Re scenarios. And I suggest to you that we, we go into this now with actually deploying the, the various vaccines, um, that's really phase four. That's phase four trials involving yes. millions of people. And, and we're going to have to learn about all of these questions. Uh, and Moderna, Moderna and Pfizer have not get released their phase three test results yet. We have to remember that. So we're all guinea pigs in this together. But um, Well, Pfizer gave their test results to the CDC. 
or to the, the for, for the phase three because USA Today yesterday said they hadn't given out their their phase maybe not three. to the public. Yeah. Maybe not to the public, but right, but they um, made a request on November twentieth for emergency approval. They would have had to give everything, including the raw data. You know? Yeah, and like I said, they have a vested interest in this. And as I said months ago, you know, this is not an American effort. This is a worldwide effort. A million Chinese people have already received their uh, Sino Sinovac. Uh, we're almost out of time, Shots. Winston. Russians have been getting theirs. So it's, it's so you, out you, there. You agree that uh, you agree with uh, Stephanie would bring Chinese doctors in? If we did not have foreigners staffing our healthcare system, it would absolutely collapse. Open the doors, bring in the qualified people, pay them well. They are working under unbelievable con conditions right now. And wherever they're from, they are welcome in my nation. Okay, Absolutely. all right. So Tim, I wanna to turn to something that Winston um, just mentioned in passing. And uh, that is the political side of this. There's a, there's a kind of Trump mini me uh, person who has blonde hair and wears ball caps, who was talking yesterday and he was, he was telling the Republicans in Georgia uh, not, not to come down, not to vote uh, in the runoffs in Georgia on January 5th. I thought that was fairly bizarre, but I mean, how do you think that's all going to go? What what are the chances that those runoffs will, you know, turn control of the Senate to the Democrats? It would be a wonderful thing, but remember, everybody's in there spending money and pulling strings. Well, there's now four days of registration left in Georgia, and I know that uh, the effort to get more and more people, even beyond the November third election to uh, register is gonna make a huge impact. And I think the counterpoint is the, the, the Trump mini me, I forget his name, <laughs> he's not doing anyone any favors. And uh, by the fact that he's um, saying, don't trust, don't trust the election and therefore don't, don't vote for these two senators. It's because um, the, the governor and the secretary of state aren't agreeing with Donald Trump. So it's, it's a scorched earth policy working against the Republicans. Yeah. I can't figure it out. I really yeah. can't. One more question before we, you know, go for last words here. Um, is this, um, you know, Trump is AWOL right now. All he's doing is grumbling and making stupid 46 minutes uh, diatribes in the White House, you know, of, of no consequence to anybody. The, the, the media is not even reporting it, really. They're not showing you any of the tapes of it. Um, so my question is, uh, you know, what, what, wouldn't we be better off if he were doing something, um, no. he's AWOL. No. He's, he's complete. <laughs> better he does no. He's better the than the, it's the, not. Well, Jay, I, 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 good, I, get, I get your question before you even uh, <laughs> finish it. And here's my here's my evidence. When George Bush, Barack Obama, and Bill Clinton have to come out and say we're going to be the poster child for taking this vaccine to uh, counteract the anti-vaxxers the anti-Trump disbelievers of COVID-19, uh, there's no other way to say this. That's one hell of a statement. That's one hell of a public relations um, maneuver to address our COVID-19 problems. I mean, I find it absolutely ridiculous that they have to step in and fill the void because Donald Trump is MIA, missing in action. Okay, let's go for last words. Stephanie, what do you want to leave people with? What's the most First of all, I want to say that the military say he ought to be he ought to be charged with dereliction of duty. It's dereliction of duty right now. He's doing nothing. Second of all, the point I think made by Cynthia, the RNA in Europe, the the Moderna is not Moderna, it's M, and then there's a slash RNA because it's ribonucleic acid. And that is a part of DNA, which is deoxyribonucleic acid. So that's the new way of doing vaccines. So all of the vaccines are going, that's different from polio and smallpox and all of this. Now there's not, not any of those kinds of dangers with this particular vaccine. But I did hear about that. And I thought that was interesting and important to understand that we are taking on something new in our bodies and it's supposed to be effective and actually safer so hopefully okay, it will we're going to study that going forward yeah uh, we'll Cynthia, what, do you, what do you want to leave with people i oh gosh i have two things and they're short i promise 
The first is, I don't know, is I think that doctors and nurses should be the first ones to get this. If there is a problem, those are the last people we need to be out there having a problem. That worries me a lot. Okay. No, I don't think Trump is MIA. Just because we don't see him does not mean he's not doing anything. He is a busy boy running around the White House, destroying all, you know, incriminating evidence, just right very scorch earth policy plan to leave Biden with a bunch of, excuse my language, crap, a big pile of nothing so that he doesn't even get to hit the ground running. He has to hit the ground and undo all of the nonsense that Trump is trying to pull right now. So with just because we don't see him doesn't mean he's not doing anything. Good point. Winston. Well, uh, going back just to, uh, yeah, the next 48 days, we, we just need to keep a mind over there at the tantrum happening, but there's nothing we can do about it. At the end of the day, Biden's going to come in. He's going to have to just throw everything off the table, find a clean surface to work on and go from there because that's what he's getting anyway. Uh, but as I've said for many, many months, rely on yourself help your neighbors see who needs you to go to Costco or Safeway, wash your hands, wear your mask, exercise individual personal responsibility because that's all we got right now. Our state has stepped up a little bit. Our city has had great testing, but at the end of the day, it's up to you to do the best that you can individually and that will bleed out into society because we're not gonna get a lot of help from um, other areas as far as control of this virus that I'm seeing nationally um, and you know, okay. in, in, in other ways. Thank you, Winston. Tim, um, what, uh, close for me, will you? What okay, should we I'll keep this really about? short because I'm sure time is an issue. Make haste, January 20th. Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank but you, then Jim. Trump's going to be running around just trying to make everything as miserable as he can. Thank you, Stephanie. Thank you, Cynthia. Thank you, Winston. Aloha, you guys. Next week for mm, Rediscovering America on Wednesday. Aloha.